My name is Davis Bell. I am the VP of Product uh, Strategy here at Instructure. And uh, we're really grateful that, that you've taken some time to come and learn more about Bridge. So I'm going to talk a little bit just quickly about how we're going to spend our time together. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of context on what Bridge is and where it came from. And then we're going to hear from uh, Karin uh, Roberts, who's the Canvas Service Manager at the University of Washington. University of Washington is a longtime time uh, Instructure Canvas client, I think four or so, five year. OK, I didn't mean to shortchange you there. Um, and then we're, we're going to hear from uh, Daniel Delgadillo from Utah Valley University. And uh, Utah, his, he is the Employee Learning and Development Manager there. And uh, Utah Valley University is one of our very, very oldest clients. I think five, six years, yeah, five and a half. So very, very early. So we um, are very lucky to have them uh, be working with us on Bridge. They're going to spend some time telling you what they use Bridge for and how it's going. Uh, we will then hear, a, we'll, we're going to actually see a demo of Bridge from Eric Smith, who's one of uh, our regional directors. And then we're going to try to leave a little time for Q&A. So that's kind of how we're going to spend the time. Uh, I am a little out of breath, I'm not going to lie. Um, I hope I'm not the only one. It's a little embarrassing because I live in Utah, which is high altitude. But, um, you know, I, I walked up the stairs like 45 minutes ago, and I'm, I'm still recovering. So, um, <laughs> So a lot of people um, want to know what Bridge is. Um, and so w I think that's the first question that, that we ought to address. So as you can see here, Bridge is a modern mobile learning platform for the training and development of employees. A lot of people ask, what's the difference with Canvas? I mean, it's right there. Canvas primarily developed for teaching and learning, for teachers and learners in an academic context. Bridge developed primarily for organizations to help train and develop their employees. So that's the main difference. When you see the demo, the, the differences will become a little bit more clear for you. So the next question that we often hear is, how did Bridge come about? And uh, I, my presentation has, um, I don't know, are you guys GIF people or are you GIF people? GIF, GIF, raise a hands for GIF, raise a hands for GIF. Oh, wow, OK. <laughs> All right, GIF people, be, be on notice. Um, OK, so, uh, so, so how, I know the founder says differently. I've heard, yeah, I'm familiar with the, the, the debate. Um, so anyway, how did it come about? Well, basically, it came about because something weird started happening. Um, and uh, that's you know, just my symbol for something weird. Um, so uh, before, not long after we released Canvas, we had clients come to us and say, hey, we love Canvas. Can we use it to train a bus driver on safety techniques? Or can we use it to, to help a lab tech learn about blood-borne pathogens? Those kinds of things. And we thought, OK, that's a little off the beaten path for what we built it for. Um, but you know, it wasn't too weird. But then something even weirder happened. Um, and this <laughs> is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> so it was like that level of weird. Um, it's impressive, though, right? It's weird and impressive. So I hope, I hope one day she makes it to, I don't know, the Kentucky Derby or something. But um, So uh, the weirder thing was that um, lots of people outside of education came to us. Nonprofits, corporations, government agencies, municipalities, and said, hey, we're hearing so much about Canvas. We've heard it's great. Can we use it? We don't even have students. Can we just use it to train and develop our employees? And the reason that's weird is because we know that there are hundreds and hundreds of companies making employee-oriented learning management systems. And so we thought, man, that's so weird. There are so many uh, companies out there doing that, and yet they're coming to us. And we're completely different. We're, we're an academically oriented teacher-student learning management system. So why are they coming to us? And so we decided to do a little digging. Um, and I feel like that puppy's so lazy. Look how easy he gives up. He's just like three seconds of digging. We did more than that. Um, so we went out and met with tons of different folks across all different industries, different sizes of organizations. And uh, the reaction was interesting. We'd say, OK, tell us how you're training your employees. Are you using a learning management system? How's that going for you? And uh, here were some of the reactions we got. There was rage and anger. Um, there was just you know, absolute frustration. And in most cases, just complete resignation. <laughs> just people with broken spirits. Um, and, and so there were a lot of reasons why that was but that we kind of boil them down to two that we heard the most frequently. 
Um, oh, and like it was so emotional that like a lot of times I was like, oh man, I gotta get out of here. These people are these people are broken. These people are sad. So um, the 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 main reason was number one, the software is bad. Okay, and uh, we heard all kinds of adjectives. Okay, they range from clunky to clicky to outdated to ugly to hard to use to complicated to complex. And I'm I'm editing the the swear words that went with those adjectives. Um, and, and the second one was people were extremely frustrated with the level of customer service and support that they were receiving. As you can see here, the, the FedEx, that's like a TV or something, by the way. You can't really see if it's like a computer screen or a TV that, that he's just delivering there. So um, anyway, th they were extremely frustrated. They felt like there was no partnership. They had no voice into the product and uh, couldn't get people on the phone. And, and so those were really the two kind of key driving frustrations that we encountered as to why people were so frustrated with their employee training LMS. So it reminded us quite a bit of what Devlin and Brian, our founders, found when they first started looking into the academic LMS market. People were frustrated with bad product, and they were frustrated with poor customer service and support. And so, um, you know, we feel like we're really good at those things. We feel like we build great software, and, and, we, and we serve it with great support. So we built Bridge. So now we're going we're gonna to have Karen come up here and tell you a little about, about her experience with Bridge. And uh, then we'll hear from Daniel and then Eric. Thanks, Karen. So can you hear me now? Um, as uh, Davis said, I'm the Canvas uh, service manager at the University of Washington, which means I'm responsible for Canvas end-to-end -end from integration into our uh, in, uh, information systems to user support. And I had similar experience uh, that I'll tell you about as the company did when we launched Canvas at the UW. So I'll tell you a little bit about um, our history with learning management systems in the past. Um, we're a large university with about 50,000 students and very decentralized. So in the past, we had multiple learning management systems that were in use. Uh, we had schools running Moodle. We had schools running uh, Blackboard. And we also built our own tools. So we have a history of a DIY attitude when it comes to software. And we built, and I have this picture here because uh, our strategy with our own uh, teaching and learning mo sort of modular set of web applications was the field of dream strategy. So if you build it, they will come. And in fact, they didn't even have to play baseball. So we had people using our home-built tools uh, for supporting academic courses, but they used them for lots of other things as well, and including supporting um, employee training, um, administrative collaboration, just distributing information. Um, and when we moved to Canvas, this made uh, it really hard to support the service. So uh, when we moved to Canvas, we, we took that opportunity to uh, change our strategy. And um, we piloted in 2011, and we've been using it campus-wide since 2012 with our uh, branch campuses as well. And we started with a very strict policy. So we only let uh, academic courses use Canvas. They're all automatically created and, and ready with enrollments available for instructors to use. And if anybody, we don't let them create courses outside of that. And if they want a, a course that's not listed in the time schedule, they need to contact us and tell us why. And I got lots of people asking me uh, to use Canvas for other reasons. Um, some of them were quite, li oh, so I got the nickname from my staff as the enforcer because they would pass along these requests from different groups. And, and I would say no, so that's my, that's my nickname. Um, some of these requests were, were uh, very legitimate. Um, they either were training that was directly related to academic programs or that they really persuaded me they had absolutely no other alternatives. So I took a, a screen capture of some of our sub-accounts that we do. So for non-academic programs, we have set up sub-accounts. Uh, for example, the Office of Minority and Affairs and Diversity has uh, some programs that they use to help the economically disadvantaged students. Um, the Office of Research provides a tremendous amount of training, and they wanted to try Canvas. Uh, uh, University Advancement persuaded me that they were uh, a legitimate use of Canvas, and that's to train uh, faculty and staff who are involved in the development process. That's fundraising, by the way. Um, so 
Again, though, this makes it really hard for me to do things like implement data retention policies, because for these uses, it's very different than it would be for academic courses. Um, and in the five years since we've adopt adopted Canvas, uh, we have so many use cases um, for training specifically. And I'll, I'll pause here to say that the LMS um, context for employee training is just as decentralized and um, diverse as it was for your academic learning management systems. We do have some people using some total. We have a lot of units that have spent a lot of money with consultants building things on Drupal. Um, and it's really not a good um, investment of, in our case, what is state resources to do that. So uh, we're excited that Bridge is emerging. So here are some of the use cases that I have encountered for um, employee training uh, who came to me asking to do these things with Canvas. So a lot of compliance training, and that includes um, Title IX and ADA training, grant administration, so with grants comes a lot of requirement for um, verification that um, the principal investigators are aware of and will follow certain policies. HIPAA training, uh, we have a huge um, medical center and, and medical and uh, dental professional schools um, and a lot of clinicians who uh, work with us as well that all need to have HIPAA, tra HIPAA training. Uh, FERPA training, the registrar provides that and they have no system to do it, so right now it's all um, voluntary. There's no tracking of that kind of uh, compliance training. And then the data security training, which is a growing need um, coming from our chief information security office. So also staff training, just training your own staff on how to use the systems and the processes that they need to complete their job. Um, systems like that don't exist. Um, even things like new employee onboarding, it's all um, one-off solutions, custom-built websites, maybe training built in Articulate, but um, not a good, efficient approach to that. Um, my uh, unit of professional continuing education has been interested in using a, a bridge as well. Um, they provide a lot of non-credit and certificate program courses that don't really fit into Canvas. They may have students who are, who are just pursuing their professional development and are not matriculated to the University of Washington. Um, so that's really awkward. As you might know with Canvas, the authentication is not very flexible. So um, we're always telling them you have to get a NetID. Um, we have some disciplines that get grants or contracts to do specific training interventions. In particular, uh, the College of Education has a lot of programs like this where they get a contract with a school district or the state to provide specific intervention and training for a group of teachers. Um, again, that's very difficult to try to manage on, on Canvas. Um, just general change management and communication. Um, when, uh, let's see, UW IT rolled out a new um, help ticketing system, uh, we were struggling for our, ourselves for a, a way to provide that kind of training and communicating about the change. And then that's not even thinking about the benefit you could provide to an institution like ours with professional development and even talent management. I mean, thinking about um, the concept of talent management is really beyond us because we're struggling just to meet the, and not really meeting the basics of compliance training that we're required to do. So a lot of use cases. And, you know, I have, um, for certain groups, um, worked with the company to spin up separate domains that they can administer themselves under our Canvas contract. We have the College of Education that has a, a cross-institutional collaboration uh, training program in early education that they have their own instance, but that is um, time-consuming and we don't manage it for them, so they have to provide the staff who will be the Canvas admin and support their users and it has additional costs for themselves, for that unit. So why are we interested in Bridge? The need is obvious, but why would we uh, look at, at Bridge as a solution instead of all of the, the commercial products that are out there? One is that it's software as a service. It's a native cloud application, and it's operated by the company. And operations is a tremendous cost. Um, part of the cost of licensing and ownership, and it's often overlooked. Um, there are a lot of systems at the university that are run under on a box underneath someone's desk still, um, to be uh, honest. And so having that um, 
really experienced company who can scale and operate um, the product is, is really important to us. In fact, we are now moving to uh, move our own applications that we build locally still um, into the cloud. Um, the open API is important to us. We're a large enough unit and we have a history of software development, so we have engineers who are interested in um, working on the integrations and even customizing the product of, and, um, and the reporting and integrating with other systems through the open API. And like I've said, we have a long relationship, if five years, well, five years in technology is a long time, with the company. Um, and a lot of trust there and a lot of experience of how open the company is and how responsive they are to customers. Um, the initial product that we looked at uh, met our basic needs. It has good features and the roadmap is, is very interesting and useful. Um, this is near and dear to my own heart. They have a, a user-centered design process. So they're really listening to clients, they're um, understanding client workflow and needs and um, treating that information as valuable and, and um, important to their development process. Scalability is also always an issue with us, so the product is scalable. Uh, I don't have any worries about performance or, or supporting the numbers of employees. We have um, 25,000 employees, I think, at the Seattle campus of the University of Washington, including the medical centers and more statewide that, that may be eligible to use it. And finally, cost. Um, so far, uh, they're coming in way under other commercial products with cost, and as a state institution, that's really important to us. So at the University of Washington, we are starting with a pilot of Bridge. Um, I am not the, and there isn't one person or one office that's responsible for employee training at the university, so because we heard the needs, we are starting a pilot and trying to um, gather requirements and um, create buy-in with the product, get people interested in it. We have uh, six groups who are piloting, and in fact, we're going live with our production instance hopefully tomorrow, uh, with about uh, possibly about 10,000 learners who will be participating. Uh, we're conducting things like um, driver safety training. Um, it's interesting that the University of Washington basically runs its own car rental agency, and everybody has to, who drives has to complete a training, so. Um, we're also, we've been, uh, my business analyst and I have been gathering needs. So there are some requirements that are unmet. We wouldn't want to go campus-wide yet with this product. And the reason mostly is that um, we have a very decentralized institution. So we need features that support the distributed authoring and management of training. And those aren't quite there yet. Um, but uh, I believe they are on the roadmap. And so I'm very excited um, and uh, looking forward to meeting all of these complex needs with, with Bridge. Thanks. All right. Um, my name is Daniel Delgadillo. Um, anyone speak Spanish here? See, sí. sí? awesome. Doesn't, don't speak Spanish. Uh, delgadillo comes from the word delgado, delgadillo. Even, so delgado means thin, delgadillo really thin. So I'm Daniel, the really thin person. <laughs> um, it's really, it's a hard name, last name to, to live up to, um, so you can imagine. But um, I'm from U Utah Valley University, UVU, and I'm the, uh, the manager over uh, employee learning and development. And I'm actually with human resources. Anyone here in HR? Oh, one person, awesome. So uh, a little bit about me before coming to HR. Um, I was in, uh, I used to work as an instructional technologist for the Innovation Center at uh, Utah Valley University. And so my job was to welcome new faculty and train them um, and show them how to use Canvas. And well now I'm in HR. So um, one of the reasons why I came into HR is because they, were, they needed help coming up with trainings, um, just revamping the trainings at UVU. And the first thing that I did when I came in was, well, let's look at our demographic, let's look at uh, our employees. And the first thing I noticed was that most of our employees are, as you can tell, they're part-time employees. We, we have 52% of our uh, staff are part-time. 
62% of our faculty are, you know, we have our adjuncts. And this number does not include also our student employees. Obviously, all, all of our student employees are part-time. And so I noticed that we needed to be somewhat flexible because most of them don't work eight to five. Be, um, and so their training needed to be somewhat flexible for them with their schedule. Um, if we look at the total workforce, this is as of uh, fall 2015. It's 4,900. We're not as big as Washington, uh, University of Washington. But we, we're, we're growing. In fact, this year, I just checked before I left, we are about 5,028. And that doesn't include um, all the students that are going to be hired here in the next couple weeks for the fall semester. So we're definitely growing. Now, something that I found interesting was that most of our employees have access to a computer on a day-to-day -day basis, um, almost 95%. The other 5.5% are those that are with maintenance, grounds, uh, facilities. They don't, they don't need to use a computer, but they do have access if they wanted to to any of our computer labs uh, on campus. Um, also by UVU, we are ORM. UVU is in ORM, Utah. We're the, the largest employer, uh, the fourth in the county, and we're in the top 25 in the state. So we feel like we, we need our employees because we have a lot of them. They need to be trained well. So um, as it was mentioned, we've been using Canvas for a while. And at the beginning, when we, one of the reasons why, why they hired me hire me was because they knew I had the, that background with Canvas. And so when I came in, they say, hey, we want to use Canvas to do our employee training. And um, like I said, we, we, we have been using Canvas since 2011. And everyone on campus knew about Canvas. But the problem that I, I th thought that we, that we were facing was Canvas was created for faculty and students. Um, it was run by academic IT. You don't really think of employee training and academic, academic IT. Um, the Office of Teaching and Learning, they're helping with that. And the courses were meant to be semester-long courses, right? Uh, with a few exceptions. And so when, when I came in, I started looking at, hey, um, actually about a year ago, I went to a bridge session. And I remember hearing about bridge. And so I thought, hey, maybe we can use bridge. And so just recently, about a month and a half ago, we implemented Bridge. We want all of, all of our employees, university employees, to use it. It's not just for faculty. We're using it uh, faculty, full-time, part-time, employees, temps, student employees, and even interns have access to, to Bridge. We, in human resources, we're managing that. We have the admin role, uh, so we're over that. And we're changing the whole perspective of we don't want semester-long courses. We want something that they can go in, get trained, and go out. Because most employees have a lot of things to do. They, training is just a small part of what they need to do uh, at work. And so um, you're probably wondering, wondering why Bridge? Like it was mentioned, there are a lot of companies out there. But what we found, number one, was the simplicity. Um, I know. Eric's going to show you a demo here in a few minutes. And if you stopped at the booth, you'll see how simple it is. Most of our authors are not, they don't have a background in any kind of instructional design or e-learning because most of them are just your average, maybe accountants, uh, admissions. Um, they're, they're drivers. They, 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 don't, they don't have e-learning background. Uh, another thing was we're... Everyone on campus seems to be familiar with Instructure. We, they love Instructure, they love Canvas, and so bringing Bridge, they could tie that in right away with, with Canvas, and they felt like, hey, we've, we've enjoyed Canvas so far, I know we're gonna like Bridge. And then the features. Again, we pro, I don't have time to go over all the features, but the smart groups, the managers' uh, roles, you can get weekly reports, you can customize a lot of things. In, it's so simple to do it at the same time. So this is what's happening at, at UVU. So this current semester, semester, my role is more to be an advisor. It's 
only me in HR that's over training. So I can't c come up with hundreds of trainings. Uh, so my role is to work with departments, train them, show them how to use Bridge. And when I was working with Canvas, it used to take me about an hour to get a faculty comfortable with, with Canvas. With Bridge, 20 minutes and they're on their way. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, right now, we're doing a, a pilot. Uh, like I said, we just released this uh, about a month ago. We have about 200 employees actively taking courses. We don't have a lot. We have 15 um, that are available, but we're planning on growing that. Right now, we have HR courses, um, accessibilities, travel, equal opportunity, purchasing, and um, web development, and other ones. And so looking forward here in the fall, um, we expect to, to have an additional 10 to 12 departments that we're going to be working with. We expect that number of courses to grow. Um, 30 to 40 courses, and we're going to revamp everything. We're starting to revamp our new employee orientation. We used to do that. It used to be a whole day event, and we noticed that was hard on our part-timers um, because, well, they have to adjust their schedule. So we're going to be putting that online, talk about their benefits, and as you can see, we're going to have a few more uh, courses. Now, we're also going to have the first mandatory crime prevention and sexual harassment course. Um, all the courses that we have right now, they're electives. Anyone can go and choose to take them. It's not mandatory. But um, coming up here in the fall, we're going to have the first one that's going to be mandatory for all the employees. So some of the response that we received is actually we received very positive. We have right now the person that goes over those sexual harassment training. Um, that's what she does pretty much all day long. And... Uh, UVU, everyone that's hired within the first month, they have to go through that training. And so right now, um, we hire about 60 to 70 new employees every month. And so she's having to meet with them, and she spends tons of hours doing this and doesn't have time to do anything else. So when I told her about Bridge and the possibilities, she was excited because she doesn't have to do those face-to-face -face trainings anymore. Uh, our AVP of uh, HR, his, he said that this will be great for our employees. I'm starting to get people saying, hey, when can I start? How, how soon? And the best is from our part-timers. In the past, because we could only do face-to-face -face tra trainings, they had to adjust their hours. They had to either come in early or come in um, late mm -hmm. to, to do that. So we were getting, uh, you know, people are excited. And the best part is that we have the uh, president's cabinet support. So we, we are all on board to, to run with this. So it's only time to Eric. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I'm excited to show you Bridge. Um, we've just got a couple minutes to show you the platform today. So I just want to point out, if you have interest, come down and see us downstairs. We've got a little lounge there. If you have further interest, let us know. We'd love to get in touch with you. So with that said, um, let's just jump into the platform and show you what it looks like. Um, the, what we're going to focus on today is ease of use from a learning standpoint and also an administrative standpoint. And we're going to start off from the learning perspective. So let's just pretend that I am a learner at an inst institution. I've been assigned a course by my manager or my administrator, and now we're going to jump in and take the course. So there's a couple ways that we can get into Bridge. Number one is when I'm assigned a course, I'll receive an automated email sitting in my inbox. And I can jump into the course right from my email. So it makes it very easy for those of us that sit in our emails, you know, day in, day out. Additionally, each of, our, each of your users will be assigned a personalized and customized dashboard just like this. So you'll see Bridge, just like Canvas, is very simple, very intuitive. And that's by design. The last thing that we want is for users to log in and get lost and get confused. Where am I going? What am I doing? So we make it very easy. If, if it's confusing and it's difficult to use, it's, no one's going to use it. It's going to lead to low adoption. So we want, want to make it very simple. Just to point out kind of the flow here, at the very top, I've got any instructor-led trainings that I can go in and I can register for. Down below, I've got anything that's overdue, right up at the top. I've got anything next up. And anything that I've ever completed in the past is readily available. If I need to go brush up on something, it's sitting there for me. Now, these courses on this page are more mandatory. They have a due date on them. You know, they've been assigned by my management team. We also have a learning library. 
where you can make optional courses available to your learners, allow them to come in and find courses that are applicable to career development or anything that is of interest to them. Make them available and they can take them optionally. What's nice about this is you guys on admin can create tags. So if I want to search for all my onboarding courses, for example, it's going to find those tags. Very quickly, I can find what I'm looking for. Okay? Let's go back to my learning really quick and go back to my next up. I've got a course here that's due in a day. It's going to take about nine minutes to complete. Let's just jump in and take this course. I want to point out really quick, this course I'm about to take, I've authored this using the native authoring tool. Um, that you guys will have access to. So for you instructional designers out there, you know, Bridge is awesome to create courses. We also support SCORM. We have a marketplace where we partner with lynda.com and Open Sesame. So we have a variety of options for you to get content into Bridge. So we'll jump in and take this course. I'll have the ability to customize a cover slide, a GIF, or a, an image here with, an with a title and a description. As we jump in and start taking this course, you'll notice at the top, I've got my progress bar. I know exactly how far I am in the course. We got images, very clean and very simple. And it's the same way on the mobile device, which I'll show you in just a second. We'll continue the next page. Um, on the authoring side, we have a variety of quiz questions that you can, you can ask your learners. This is a vocabulary question, so I want to make sure that my learners are understanding the new terms that are being introduced. So we'll click here, click Submit. I got that correct. Go to the next question, really easy to get videos in. And I'll show you in just a second, I'll author a quick course and show you how easy it is to embed videos. Um, the next question, I've got a sorting question where I need to sort the correct order. So just by drag and drop, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna sort what the right SMART goal uh, order is. And we've got that correct, we'll click Submit and click Continue. Now let's say I've got another video here, let's say I start this at home then I want to go finish it on, I start this in the office on my desktop, and I want to go home and finish it on my smartphone. So we're built in responsive design. So it doesn't matter what device your users are using Bridge on and taking courses, smartphone, tablet, desktop, they're going to have the same great experience. So I'll scroll down to my next up course, Smart Goals. We'll jump right into it. Bridge is automatically going to remember right where I left off, so I'll never lose my spot. Um, watch this video here. You'll see here the author has opened up some Q&A or some comments, which they've turned on, which you guys will have the ability as authors to turn on or off per page. So you'll see here I've got some interaction with my users here. You can upload images, reply. Just have a really nice social interactive experience. We'll click continue. There's one more question here at the end just to fill in the blank that I've made available here. Um, I'm just going to get it wrong on purpose. We'll say March. Click submit. Incorrect. The author in this instance has required 100%, so I'm going to have to go and retake it. But that hopefully, you guys, gives you an idea how easy it was for me to get into Bridge and, uh, and take the course really quick. I, I've got a few minutes. you mind if we open it up after this? OK. Um, so I'm going to jump over right now to the admin side and show you what it looks like to be an administrator. When you first log in as admin, you're going to see who's overdue, who's completed. If I'm a manager and I have a team of five or 10, I'll be able to see and manage those individual teams so I don't see everybody within the organization, okay? Down below, I've got some, we give you some additional insights so you can really look into the adoption of Bridge and see what's going on within your environment. So we give you some really nice tools for that. A Couple other things really quick on the admin side. We allow you to control your roles and permissions. You can get very granular who does what inside of Bridge. Maybe you wanna give a subject matter expert or someone authoring privileges, you know, in a different department and you just want to give them authoring privileges, you can turn that on here. Um, also, I've got just a logo here that I've picked out. We, we want to keep your brand consistent throughout the bridge experience from logo, from colors, so we make that consistent throughout the process for you. Now, let's go in and build a course really quick. I'm going to go into my course library. This is where all of your courses are going to live, whether they're bridge authored, if you bring in a SCORM course, or if it's one of our marketplace courses. So I, I've got them all sitting here. I can easily search for them. Um, uploading SCORM courses, very easy. Starting a brand new bridge course from scratch up at the very top right, very easy. I've got one I've already started. I'm just going to come in here and edit. This is going to launch the bridge authoring tool. This is what it looks like. So I'll have the ability to come in here and put the title. Again, I can customize a cover slide. So I've got an image here on my desktop that I'm just going to pull in, cover slide, just so you see how quick and easy it is to make a front door to the course. So here's my technology security best practices. Now let's go back and start building the course. I've got cybersecurity. Now you'll see some standard formatting like a Google Doc or a Word document with bold and, and bullets and that. 
I've got a, a button here that's our media button, and this is going to allow me to bring in images and uh, videos. So I've got an image sitting out here on my desktop that we'll just pull in really quick. And then I'm going to go out to a website here and just grab just some of this information here. Just some information on technology security. We'll grab it, paste it in. You'll see it keeps all of the bolding and the, you know, the bullets, makes it really nice and clean. The hyperlinks are all still there. So copying and pasting, really easy to do. Saves you guys a ton of time on the authoring side. Let's do a video. So we have a Cybersecurity 101 video. I've already got some content in here. Let's go to YouTube, grab that URL. I'm just gonna copy it. We'll go back to that media button, paste that in. That quickly, that video is now uh, embedded into Bridge. So we can support Vimeo, YouTube, or if you have an internal video, you can upload it just the same, okay? Now I, I wanna open up some comments. I mentioned you guys will have the ability to turn this on or off. So just right here, I can turn on or off comments allow that interaction within my employees, okay? Last, set, last thing I'll show you here, I'll show you a couple more things in the last couple of minutes. We have a variety of quiz questions that you can ask, you know, from vocabulary, steps and process, sorting, all that kind of stuff. I've got one already built here, which is a factoid question. I've pasted in a factual statement here. It's broken out the statement word by word. Now I have the ability to come in and add some distractors and build a question bank of potential questions to ask my users. So if I get this wrong and I go in and retake it, a different variation of the question will be presented to me the next time around, okay? We'll go back to the master course. We're ready to publish this and distribute it. There's some settings here. I can, you know, adjust the required score, the do within. I can make a certificate available. I can turn that on in the library. You know, some different features you can have uh, for setting up the course. But now it's ready to go. I'm ready to send it out to a group of employees. So this is the last thing I want to talk about is we allow groups and assigning groups and enrolling users really easy in Bridge. So we'll work with you and we can pull your users from your SIS and we can pull that on a nightly basis so you have a refresh of employees every night. Once you get users in here, this is all kind of a long list of everybody I've got in the system. Once you've got them in the system, based on the attributes we're pulling from your SIS or a CSV file that we're pulling in, we can come in and we can start to make some custom smart groups. So you'll see I've got some already set up here. Let's just build one, student employees on the north. So based on those attributes, let's say the campus is gonna be north, and I wanna add one more rule, and I want this to be department student employees. So now I've got all of my student employees, okay? So I've got that group, I can go assign, enroll that you know, particular group, and take that course. If there's some additional reporting that I don't have time to get into, please come and see us. If you've got more questions, we'd love to continue conversations with you guys. Thank you. Thank you.